May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strong rock and redeemer. Amen. Amen. Perhaps you all have had a similar experience to this when you were growing up, when you were in elementary school. At least in Kentucky, we did it like this. You'd go to your school and go to your main class because you were in the one class for most of the day. So you'd show up in the morning and, and, and greet your friends and you would be there and then suddenly there would be a little noise from the school sound system or a little chime, ding, 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 whatever. That may be quiet. And then the principal would come on and it was Mrs. Smith and she would say something to the effect, good morning, Don Elementary, this is Mrs. Smith, your principal. We begin our day and she would make a couple of announcements. And then she would turn it over to a student, the privileged student that got to make the student announcements for the day. So she would say, now turn it over to Megan Thomas, a fifth grader from Mrs. Wilson's class, who will make our school announcements for the day. And she would go on on who's on a field trip and who's doing what and what's happening next week and field days next week, etc. And then wrap it up with the lunch menu. We'll have hot dogs, tater tots, and cherry jello. <laughs> Love school lunches. So you wrap it up with that. And then she'll say, please stand beside your desk, put your hand over your heart, and we will say together the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With that, we would sit down at the day when it would begin. We began the day like that every morning all through grade school. I don't think we did it in high school, but all through grade school we began every morning by saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Because that's what we do. Because we're Americans. We would look at the flag hanging there above the chalkboard and we would put our hands on our hearts. We're one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Go team. I began to think, okay, great. I said, well, we, we do the same thing here too. So every Sunday we gather, we gather up the study, then after I get done preaching, and care well, wait a second, she'll stand up and say, let us now stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. We are the church. We are the body of Christ. Go church. Go Jesus. We're united. We're one. We got it. And then if you're like most folks, we have our band of folks we hang out with. We have our families. We have friends. We have those close Compatriots that are with us through thick and thin, through good times and bad times, they're there with us. And we take on the mottos like the three musketeers, right? All for one and one for all. You've got your buddies that you would get into mischief with and you would do great things with and those buddies who would cover for you and then lie for you if you needed to to cover up for mama or do whatever they needed to do. Because you were all together. I had a such friend, John Smith, you've heard about him before, my best man. We were both in Sunday school together from we were this big, and we would come out of Sunday school every Sunday morning at the church, and we'd put our arm around one another, and we would sing, Surely goodness and mercy. We'd go, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. And we would walk up and down the halls of Wall Street Baptist singing, Surely goodness and mercy. He was my musketeer, and I his, and I was the best man in his wedding, and he and mine. Friends, family, together, go team. Now, then on occasion, you find yourself in, in, in the bathroom, or standing in front of the mirror, and, and you're looking at the mirror, and you're going, come on, Paul, come on, you, you, you can do it, you can do it. You've got it in there. Go, Paul, go, go. You, you can do it. Don't, don't be afraid. Be courageous. Be strong. You've been there before. You can do it. Or, 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 or don't be too hard on yourself. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. Don't say you're sorry. Forgive yourself. It's all right. 
We have conversations, well, well I do, I should speak for you. I have conversations with myself all the time. And I answer myself all the time. And sometimes the conversations get to the point where I have to call in a third party imaginary person to arbitrate the conversation with them having with myself. So I call my own make believe therapist to like figure what I'm doing now. To say to Paul one, what do you say to Paul two? Get it together for me, thanks. Do you hear what you're saying? Because we within ourselves are a unity of ourselves, of our own beings. We go team me. Go. Because that's how we are. We, we talk about it in spirit like mind and body and mind, body and spirit. And, and with scripture, the Lord Jesus Christ says, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, with all of your strength. We are to be unified in heart, body, mind, soul, strength as we live our lives. So why do we do all this? One nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, etc. Why do we, why do, we do musketeers, one for all, one for all, all for one and one for all? Why do we stand within our own selves of heart, body, mind, and soul? I can do it, I can do it. Yeah. Well, we think this way and do this way because that's how we were created. Because we were created by God who is perfect unity. God is not a singularity of being, but a plurality and perfect unity of being. And God, Father, Son, and Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, the, the perfect unity of creation, of love, of grace, of mercy, of everything that is life-giving and life-sustaining is this perfect unity of God. And this being of perfection created us to live in and be a part of this perfect unity of being. Because that is how we were created to live and to be. And that's how it was. We tell our story of Genesis. If you go back to the first lesson, there we were in the garden, naked and everything, and not ashamed. Just standing there in front of God and everybody. Just naked as can be, just walking around, talking in perfect unity with one another, with God, and with ourselves, and there was no shame. There was no fear. There was no division. There was no strife. All for one and one for all. With liberty and justice for all. There we were. We had it. And then came along that pesky, daggone, cotton-picking serpent and starts talking to us. Or we start talking amongst ourselves, and the next thing you know, we start talking about how oh, this is going, this is great, this is good, I love it, it's good. But I mean, for heaven's sakes, we don't have to be in perfect unity every second of every day with God. I mean, come on. He doesn't expect it like every second of every day. We can like have a couple of hours a day just to like do what we want to do. I mean, God gave us minds and, and to think and, and bodies to move and, and souls to, to feel and all this. I mean, He doesn't mean like every second of every day. We can think for ourselves. We're good, we're smart, we got it going on. Look at the garden, it looks pretty good. We do good work, we can keep this going. So we said, well, let's just, let's just try this. We can, we can try this. And well, we can try that. And we can think this, and we can say that, and we can do this. So suddenly, we chose, and we made the choice, and we took the steps, and we chose not to live in perfect unity anymore with God who would desire that we live in perfect unity. Because that's what we do. That's what we do. And with that, this beautiful gift, this beautiful thing that had been created, it was creation and all that's in it was sort of dropped upon the floor of the cosmos and, 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 and shattered. This beautiful unity of creation was dropped and shattered into an infinite number of shards and pieces that are all over the cosmos now. And we're sitting there going, what happened? Well, our egos happened, and our pride happened, and our sin happened, and our brokenness happened. And, and from that point on, we've been walking around, picking up the shards of our lives, and picking up the shards of creation, and, and holding them in our hands, and saying, how do, we, how do we get this back together? How do we get this back together? What peace do you have? What peace do you have? 
And sometimes we take our shards and we put them together in perfect joining with other people. We find our place and we put some balm of Gilead on there and we find, to find our unity again. And yet sometimes we take our shards and cut and hurt and pierce and kill others with our shards, making more disunity and discord. But ever since then, we've been living in disunity. Because we know down deep in our DNA that indeed a kingdom divided in amongst itself cannot stand. A family divided against itself cannot stand. A person, a soul divided against itself cannot stand. Now we can stand for a while. We can hold it together for a while. We can make it look like we're standing for a while. But eventually we fall. Like Humpty Dumpty. And all the king's horses and all the king's men tried desperately to put Humpty back together again. Well, that's what we've been doing for a long, long, long time. Now we look at, at our tendencies often to look and go, well, well you know what, it's, it's dad, what, it's the country's fault. It's, it's the nation's fault. We say one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, justice for all. It's the nation's fault. If Washington would get their act together, it would be good. It's not Washington's fault. Well, okay, well, it, it's the church's fault. The Nagel, the Pope, and the this, and the presiding bishop, and the bishops, and the church has screwed it up. The church is so corrupt. If, if the church got it together, we get it together. It's not the Pope's fault. It's not the presiding bishop's fault. It's not the bishop's fault. It's not the institution's fault. Well, if my dad or Uncle Harry weren't such a jerk, if my dad would have been nicer to me, I would have done better. If my wife or my husband would just get their act together, our relationship would be in unity and harmony. But don't, don't, don't point at them either. Because basically it comes down to the fundamental point that we are not at unity with ourselves. As souls and bodies and hearts and living beings, we ourselves, I am not in unity with myself. I am not in unity in heart, mind, body, soul to love God with all that I am and all that I have. I am not in unity with me. So I walk around my shards and broken, just trying to live with yours, and sometimes it just doesn't go well. But only united we stand, divided we fall. So what do we do? Well, for one way, I think we keep looking at other people and blaming other folks for what's wrong and what's going on. Because Washington ain't going to fix it. And the Pope, as good as Francis might be, ain't going to fix it. And as rocking as Michael Curry is, he ain't going to fix it. And even if Uncle Harry or your daddy goes to therapy forever, he ain't going to fix it. At some point, I believe it comes down to us and our willingness to be humble before God and for our willingness to look into the mirror, to look into our hearts and souls and say, God, it's broken. I broke it. Well, it, it's, it's broken. My family's broken. My marriage is, 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 is broken. My children are broken. I'm broken. I can't get it back together. And I can't stand it anymore. I can't stand it. Can you help me get it back together? That is God's desire. To me, God's intimate and most, most intimate and longing desire of God's heart and soul is for us to be at one with one another and one with Him in perfect unity to restore the brokenness, to take the shards and pieces of our life and to put them back together perfectly. Jesus Christ lifted high on the cross that all might come within the reach of His saving embrace, that all might be one. And it starts in the waters of baptism and hearing the call of beloved. It, it, it continues with coming to the table and being fed, with going on our knees and asking for forgiveness by standing up and going out here in service to care to be the hands and feet and eyes and ears of a loving and gracious God, that we work together humbly with contrite and loving and gracious hearts, admitting our brokenness and the shards of our existence and the mess we've made of life. And get over our arrogance that we don't. We stand so often and say, well, I've got my life together, but they don't. Look at their family. Look what a mess they've made. We've all made a mess. 
mess. Some bigger messes than others, admittedly. But we come together unified with the shards of life and say help. I, I hadn't planned this in the sermon that I popped it at 8 o'clock, so I'll pop it in here too. I mean, look at this week in the news. Kate Spade, uh, Anthony Bourdain, two folks got it together, not all over the world. They got the world by the tail. But their lives are shards of brokenness and isolation. So they take their own lives. You've known that. Perhaps a family member or a friend. We struggle with addiction. We struggle with mental illness. Our kids are on opium. Drinking too much. Sex is for fun. People's arrogance. Greed. We think we're friends because we're on Facebook, Snapchat. We grow in our isolation. We grow in our fragmentation. We grow as scattered shards, acting like we're together. I believe that we have to come and by the grace of God say, it's broken and I cannot fix it and put our trust and faith and open our hearts to the loving embrace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I want you to live in the garden again. I want you to live in the garden again. And one day, my friends, one day, my sisters and brothers, we will. One day, we'll live in the garden again. In the name of the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.